Hello again. My name is Gad Lim. I'm Director of Assessment at Michigan Language Assessment. Welcome to this second episode in our series, where we take a look at the subskills behind reading and listening and how we might go about teaching these to our students. If you haven't already, I encourage you to watch the previous episode first, where we lay out the empirical research using our MET tests that's behind the things we're discussing in this series. In this episode, we'd like to take a look at the findings for listening, where the results are somewhat different and perhaps slightly more complicated. So let's get going. We found that as in reading, what learners tended to master first uh, was the linguistic aspects. So they develop mastery in syntax and they develop uh, mastery in vocabulary. So we see that it's important for them to have a strong linguistic base first in order to listen. So maybe that's something for us to think about as we teach listening. Do they have enough knowledge of the English language in order to be able to listen successfully? If not, perhaps we can help them with these. But before I say more about which ones to help them with, let's take a look at what the subsequent uh, subskills are that they go on to master. What the research actually shows is that it's actually mastery of vocabulary that leads to mastery in listening for global information and in mastery in listening for inference. Syntax kind of sits off in a corner by itself and does not have much of an impact in the learning of uh, the subsequent global listening skills. Now, in many ways, I don't think this is very surprising. If you think about it, with written texts, we tend to have more complex constructions and therefore knowledge of uh, syntax is able to help us comprehend written texts. On the other hand, we don't tend to use as many complicated sentences when we speak because keeping in mind that, you know, there is the princi Grice's principle of cooperation and, and, and the other principles, uh, we aim to be understood. So we don't try in general to come up with complex constructions and therefore syntax does not come into play as much in listening. For that reason, for your pre-listening tasks, perhaps the thing to work on is the pre-teaching of vocabulary because the more that they activate the vocabulary that they're going to encounter or you know, uh, other, other vocabulary in the same semantic field, that will help them be prepared to listen in on oral texts. Now, you saw that after mastering vocabulary, it is uh, global listening for global meaning and listening for inference that they master next, which leaves detail as a subskill that they actually master last. In fact, in our research, we found that this actually tends to occur late in the day. Now, again, to me, this is not very surprising because in reading, you are in control of the pace where you're reading and you have the opportunity to go back and therefore you can actually take advantage of that reality to pick up detail here, pick up detail here, pick up detail here, and then put that together in order to come up with what the global meaning of the passage is. But listening is different because listening is a real-time activity where the, the oral stream is just going through. And if you spend your time focusing on detail first, then you might actually miss out those things, at least if your language skills are not yet that developed. So I can see why learners would first be able to handle just have a general sense of the meaning of the overall interaction. And then it's actually the stronger learners who not just get the global meaning, but also pick up on the detail. And so I guess what this means for when we teach listening is we should actually tell them to first try to get the gist of what the speaker is talking about and maybe we could play the whole thing a second time and then get them to focus in on picking up more of the detail. Not the other way around. If we tell them to first listen for detail, they might actually get frustrated at the number of ones they miss and therefore not just miss detail, but also miss the global meaning. And so I think what this suggests again 
is that we should get them first to listen generally. What is the global meaning? What is the speaker trying to do here? And then after that, if they have uh, mastered that, get, then get them to focus on picking up the rest of the details. I appreciated the opportunity that these findings gave me to think about the differences between listening and reading. I've offered some of them up to you to explain why the findings are different. Because one is a written text that we can actually deal with at our own pace and go back. The other one is a continuous real-time activity where we can't do that. One is a written text where people use more complex constructions more of the time in the other, people tend to actually strive to be understood more, more readily, and therefore they're different. And so if we continue thinking about these differences between reading and listening, we should be able to think about how we can best teach each one of, the, of these skills. In the next episode, I'll talk about the reading and listening subskills with regard to the CFR levels, so that if you know which CFR level you're learners are at, you will know which kinds of things to focus on in order to help them in the most efficient fashion. I hope you will join me for that episode. But until then, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.